Hello, all you beautiful people, and welcome to what's sure to be the best episode of the Titanium Practice Podcast. I am your host and personal freedom coach, Dr. Stephen Freeman. How y'all doing today? Hopefully you are crushing it at your office, crushing it in life. Maybe that's even, that's way more important. Hope you're out there crushing it in life uh, rather than simply focusing on the office all the time. Uh, so today... Today, what I was thinking we were going to talk about are thinking long-term about where you want to be with your practice. So we know step one is about getting specialty procedures into your office so that we're increasing the value of every single hour that you are actually practicing so that we can cut back on the number of hours that you're working, so that you can then go play, you can go on vacation, you can do not dental things, and so you're actually getting the money that you want to be making and looking to getting off of PPO plans. You cannot do that until you have created that time that margin in time and money. So in the meantime, though, you have to start thinking about where you're going to next. All right, step one, which is our main focus, specialty procedures in the office, coming super GP, and focusing on making sure that the money you're bringing in now is more than what you've been bringing in in less amount of time. So that is focus number one, but as I always like to talk about as long-term vision, long-term thoughts, long-term plans, where are you headed next? Because when you get to next, you can't be sitting there flat-footed not knowing what you want to do. You want to have a plan in place before you get there. Because otherwise you're wasting time and we've only got so much time to make this stuff happen, okay? So I want you to be thinking about what do you want your practice to look like? And I've talked a lot about like the idea of, hey, you could work one day a week, have a really small team, run a real you know, lean, mean, fighting machine type of office. You can have a lot of, uh, you, could, you could have a lot of uh, practices within your practice, a lot of buildings to go to. You can create a giant building and just have one location that you go to. And, and one of my favorite sayings, Every solution presents its own problem. So not one of those is the best option. And it might not even, you may think you know what you want it to be right now and you may get there and say, that was not what I wanted. There are days when I do go into the office and I look around and it is overwhelming to have that many people that want a piece of you. And the moment you walk in that door, they, they want something from you. They're plugging into you and downloading what they can from you. And that, you know, there's a great many benefits to it. Again, that place runs without me. It does not need me. You know, I'm going away, you know, for a week for spring break with my family. They don't care. I'm going to Europe for two and a half weeks this summer. They won't care. It doesn't make a difference that I'm there. But there starts to become some issues that come with that, obviously, of having that big of a team. There are still, you know, there are different headaches then of then when I had a very lean, like I said, lean, mean, fighting machine team where we were dentaling a day a week. And all I was really doing was specialty procedures. That was it. That was it. That was all I was doing. We had the couch. We had the three. I th- a team of three. They fit on a couch. And they were all some of my favorite people in the world. They didn't really give me any headaches. Really, the only headaches I had was actually practicing dentistry. Because there's always bumps in the road. Whenever you're treating patients, things are going to go awry. And, you know, people are, you know, either going to have not the outcome you were hoping for them to have, or they're going to get pissed off even when you did get the outcome you were hoping to have. You, you know what it is. You, you deal with it every day. You know exactly what I'm talking about. So, so even with the, the lean team, there were, there's still issues. But you know, even at a day a week, 
the, the office still needed me to be doing the work. It didn't function without me. It was totally dependent upon me. And I am not a humble person at all, but I didn't want the practice to be about me. I didn't, that's not what I wanted. Like I did the whole thing. I made, I wrote, you know, I've written three books now. You know, I talked about how I was on TV. I was the face of the practice. They were all coming to see me. If they didn't see Dr. Freeman, then they all got, you know, mad. They didn't want to see anybody else. And like, I, you know, again, I, they, I did not want that. I didn't want it to be all about me. So, and, and, and this podcast, this, this podcast is not about me or this whole, the whole Titanium Practice podcast is not about me. It is about you and how you can get to where you want to be. I've just done it and it's tough to maybe get to the next step if you've never been to that next step. And so then that requires then someone like me's help to help guide you on that path. So this isn't about just me wanting to talk and hear my voice, even though I said one of my favorite things is hearing the sound of my voice. And the only thing that I like better than that, I think, is hearing my words come out of somebody else's mouth, like one of my employees or hearing my kids. So yes, I won't shy away from that part of it, but I will say that this is not about me, this is about your journey and what you need to do. And so that's why I say you need to be mindful and at least be thinking about where you want this thing to head. And in that is the fact that you are going to have some choices to make. And again, it wasn't just about the actual size of the practice, but basically kind of the focus of of that practice once you kind of define what type of practice you want to have. Because you are going to, you, you only have got, you've got three options to choose from, and you only get to choose two. You only get to choose two. And you have to choose wisely, okay? It's one of the things I always say to my kids before they go to school is I say, make wise decisions. Because I guess it's, it's basically the same as saying good decisions, but I always kind of feel like the wise is things that will affect things long-term. So I'm always, I'm always trying to think long-term about everything. And, and so I would like for you to make a wise decision about what you want your choices to be of these, of these three options, because it will affect your practice for a very long time. So your choices are service, quality, and price. You get to choose two of those three. And if you attempt to choose all three and say, oh, I'm not going to, I'm going to go out there and we're going to have the best damn practice out there and I'm going to do it at the lowest price that I possibly can. I mean, you'll, you'll go crazy and you will not be profitable. It cannot be done. Now, I'm not telling you to go do shit work. I'm not telling you to go be the cheapest person in town or the most expensive person in town. But what I'm saying is is that only two of those are what your main focus can be on, and you cannot do all three. It's not possible to do all three at the level you need to be doing it at. So that's where margin of time, margin of money come into play. That's all this what this is all about. It goes back to the freedom formula of we're going to free you up so you can focus on these things. We're going to get to the point where you can really dive down and make sure that you nail two of those three things. I have no problems playing the volume game and saying, let's do this at a, like, like let's just cram the practice full of people because we're going to charge the least amount. Talk about a win-win. You know what inflation's doing right now. You know what you're... Hell, you you look at your grocery bill now. Again, some of the poorest dentists in this country still make a lot more money than the average person does. And if you're looking at your grocery bill now, what is the average person looking at? 
the person who's buying your treatment, what do you think is going through their minds right now? I mean, I, I, I have not changed my shopping habits at all. But I, other, other than I, I, I now look and I look at that receipt and I'm like, damn, that's like not like that a short time ago. I mean, I just turned into old man Freeman talking about, oh, I remember when, when gas was 79 cents a gallon. There's a, there's a funny picture. My wife and I were dating and uh, started dating in the late 90s. Actually, we just celebrated our 27th anniversary of our first date. And I'm not that old. 46, I think. And, um, and it, was just a, it was just a random picture. We weren't taking a picture of the, the gasoline sign, but there's a, the, the sign that displays the price of gas over our, our shoulder. Um, and you can see it says 79 cents a gallon. That was like 1998, I believe. I was like, holy crap, you know, that's, that's a, that's a change. And then I remember like shopping, it was like, like a, you could, around the holidays, like around like 4th of July, you could get like a pound of ground beef for like a dollar. And you're like, Phew. good luck with that now. So that's the only thing that's changed. I was looking at my receipt, but obviously I'm not talking about, it. the, the point is, is, is like, if you want to do a higher amount of seeing patients, you're going to need to have associates. Because again, we're trying to make you free. We're not trying to make you busy. We're trying to make you free. All right. So if you're going to go down that route, then 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 reducing price, get more patients in, create a win-win. You're giving dentistry to folks who maybe otherwise couldn't afford it at that point in time. And then, but but now you need to have lots of associates to be able to do that. Because you can't you can't be doing that. Or, you know, I, I don't think you want, you, you shouldn't be listening to this podcast if you want to be doing that. If you want to be seeing all those patients, I'm not the guy for you then, okay? There's plenty of other folks out there who will want to double your production for the sake of doubling production and not thinking about other things like time. I'm, I'm here for your freedom. That's what I'm here for. And so that is, that is an option though, of just reduce the price. You'll see more people. It'll be great. It'll be great. Okay. But you, you're going to have to have associates then. And then you're going to have a, have a big team supporting all those associates. And you just need to be prepared for that. That's all. You just need to be thinking about that. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I mean, the flip side of it is you're going to be talking about price. And you're going to say, well, well hell, I'm going, to, I'm going to have a really expensive practice. And, and that will drive your practice the exact opposite way of where you know you're not going to be seeing many people. Now you can use price as a strategy to, again, get a little bit more freedom for yourself. Because you're not going to be doing as much work then. You're the most expensive person in town. You're going to be doing less dentistry, almost assuredly, unless you got a hell of a marketing system in place. You can do it, and people do it all over the place. That's fine, but you, man, you better really have the time to put it into it. Then that is when you get into, hey, I'm going to go buy some, you know, create some books, become the authority on stuff. That's when I'm going to get out there and really, you know, build rapport with the community to be able to, to have a, a higher price then. So you need to be thinking about what kind of price do you want to be charging? There is a whole lot more work. That's why you see discounts all over the place because it's easier to reduce the price in the short term. It's always easier to do reduce the price in the short term. And there's going to be work either way because work, you got to put up with associates and, and all the support staff that goes along with them then too. That's a lot of work. You don't think about that initially, but it's it's still easier to slap a cheap price tag on something and get more people to come on in. There's no two ways about it. It's just easier to do it that way, but ultimately then you end up having um, other things on the back end of it that you need to take care of, like a bigger team. Flip side is there's a lot of work. You raise your prices and all of a sudden now you got to get out there and you get you need to become an authority on implants, the authority on braces. The authority on root canals. The authority on crowns. You, you could become the authority on crowns. You charge $3,000 for a crown that you can deliver in one day. That could get you to freedom. But, I mean, good luck doing that today. Uh, that's fine. You can get there. You can do it. You turn that into a specialty procedure. But I'm, I'm not... When I say don't do another crown, I'm talking about don't do it another PPO fee. That is not the answer. That is not what we're talking about. Um, so that's one of them price service. What kind of service are you going to give? If you, 
if you want to give world-class service and you, so at my office, when they walk in, the person is not behind a glass window that greets them. They are, they're basically at a, a server stand. Like when you go to a restaurant, there's a, you walk in and there's the greeter stand. We have a greeter stand. Call it the macaroni because it's shaped like a piece of macaroni on the, on the drawing. So who's going to, who's going to, Staff the macaroni, they always say. So making sure that we have uh, what are called happiness coordinators. Stupid name, but I want it to be something that when everyone thought about it, what was their job? And their job was to make the patient happy. That's their job. They are totally dedicated. They make sure their cases are in on time. They make sure that when people call, they, they have a point of contact. Who are they calling? But again, I, you know, I've got a bigger practice. So like if you've got a smaller practice and there's only five people and there's only like Betty at the front desk to begin with, you know, some of these things you can't do. But I'm just saying is they, like in my office with as big as it is, you could have I, like seven, eight different people answer the phone. And so there's no, there's no person that maybe they can make a connection with to resolve an issue. And I don't want there to be issues. A lot of times when people get pissed off about something, they just want to be heard. And I'm sure you've heard that before, but at the same time, they just want to be heard. So if I've got a person to address that, and who has been given my full faith and backing to go into it and make sure that that person is happy, great. You have a happy patient. You want to talk about retention? There's some retention for you. Think about all your medical providers right now. Think about all of them right now. Think about any, and for that matter, think about any place you buy from. Any place you buy from right now. Do you have a person, and I'm not talking about a customer service department, I'm talking about a person that you can call to get help from, to have a question answered, to voice a concern, to praise your team. You'd be amazed how many of them get calls to say, hey, I just wanted to let you know that Shannon did a great job today. She did a great job and I was very happy with it. I mean, for the longest time before we ever instituted the happiness coordinators, all we got were, were complaints. Like if you get a phone call for someone to say something, it was a complaint. Like, you know, beyond like there's, you know, the billing that just like, if you're going to get a call, no one, no one ever called to say, Hey, Shannon did great today. You don't get those. So then we institute this and all of a sudden the happiness coordinator is getting calls to say, hey, thank you for blah, 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 blah. Because you guys are doing a great job. You are. I'm sure you're doing a great job. Your patients love you, but people don't like to go out of their way to tell you you're doing a great job. If they're pissed, they will climb a mountain to tell you that they're pissed. It's the funniest thing, but you, but you know, it's true. And that's, and that's, it's so funny. Cause you go and you look at your reviews and they're always either five star or one star. There's almost no four or three star reviews out there. I mean, obviously they exist, they exist, but I'm just saying they're, they're one side or the other. It's either a five star or one star. And man, when someone's pissed, whoo, we got one guy, it's kind of funny. So I got a, I got a, a guy who likes to, I, I can't remember if it's updating or just, he just posts a new one, but he, he got so mad and he was in the wrong. It is funny because he is in the wrong and he has no idea that he actually is in the wrong. But you know, I think we all believe that everyone's always in the wrong. This guy totally was in the wrong. He is so angry about a $23 bill that he got. And he got that bill eight years ago. And every year on the anniversary I, again, I can't tell if it's just if there's just a way to update your your review on Google or he, he just posts a new one to let us know and to let everybody know that that he's mad about the twenty three dollar bill. 
which by the way, we wrote off. So like he's, he's, he never even got charged the $23, even though he should have been. And I was just, I just remember at the time, like, I remember it. I, you know, it's something that sticks out. You're like, how can someone be so irate about $23? And yet there it is. So it just makes me laugh. And actually now it's almost worth it because there's just, it's such a much better story than guy paying me $23. Like that's, that's not a story, but guy getting angry enough about $23 to waste his time to bitch about it once a year, I think is pretty great. That's well worth 23 bucks right there in my book. Um, so service, service, how do you, like how, like how big of a people person are you? Or are you willing to hire people who are people pleasers? Okay. Cause they're out there. There's people who love it. My, one of my hygienists, you know, if she wasn't a hygienist. I'd make her one of the happiness coordinators because you can hear her laugh and hear her talk all over the building. Building's 12,000 square feet and you can hear her from almost anywhere, you know, and, but, and, and, and it's always funny because she comes in and, you know, we, we, you know, we discuss, you know, the three minute rule of, of get to know your patient. We always laugh because we'll be like, oh, you know, she knows the patient in the chair, you know, she's wearing blue socks today and she uh, bought her shoes, you know, at Amazon and her latest shirt she got while she was on vacation. I'm like, just knows everything about the person, everything about the person. And there's, there's people who are out there that enjoy that. And some people don't really give a shit about that stuff. I mean, it's just you know, it's, I don't care. And, um, so, so if you're not that person, you can absolutely hire people to, to make your office that way. You just need to be aware of that, but you need to be thinking about, you need to put, be intentional then about having high quality service, like really high quality service. And in my opinion, those happiness coordinators are the answer to you being fee for service. You have to be able to distinguish yourself and push the service, in my opinion, up is what sets you up to have the higher price. That and the higher price would then be fee for service. Because otherwise, why wouldn't I just get my crown done down the road? That is how you retain patients from dropping PPOs, which you're going to start doing once you're producing more with your fewer, you know, specialty procedures that you're going to be doing. That's how you do it. That's how you retain them. Not everyone's going to leave you. They, I told you already, they love you. They already like you. That's why they come to you. That's why they come to you. So they love you. You just don't get to hear that. You just hear the bitching and the moaning. So they love you and they want to stay with you and you have to give them a reason. Give me the value is what they want. And some, and some people are going to leave. They're going to leave totally based on price. When we started dropping PPOs, it was, it was, you know, it was some of it, some of it was almost initially scary, but the number of patients who come back to you, because the other guy sucks. It's amazing. They don't like them. Or you did such a good job of indoctrinating them into your culture that when they see it differently, when they call on the phone and the person doesn't answer the phone in the same way, or they don't get treated the same way when they come into the office, you being on this, listening to this podcast today shows you are intentional about improving your practice. And there are dentists all around the world right now who are doing nothing about improving their practice. And if you pay attention to it, it's going to improve. It's that simple. It really is. It's like, you know, and I've battled with my weight a lot. I'm in a good place right now, but I battle with my weight a lot. And, 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 you know, at the end of the day, you know, fat people don't like stepping on a scale. They don't. It's just the matter. They don't want to know. Ignorance is bliss. But if you're being intentional about losing weight, you need to be stepping on that scale frequently. Because you need to be measuring it and making sure it's happening. But right now, you are being intentional about improving your practice. So if you're being intentional about improving your practice, then there are things you can be doing and there are things that you're going to do that means that you're going to have a great team that's going to keep people at your practice even after you start to drop PPOs. Some will absolutely leave, for sure. They are, they are a transactional relationship that you have. 
It's all about the money. You are a commodity to them and you're never going to change them, but they were never going to be a great patient anyways. Don't worry about those people. That was one of the huge revelations in my life is focusing on relationships. I want to be around people who are in it for not just themselves. Who are they in it for? I want win-wins all over the place. So that's why I want to work with you because I want to help you grow your business. How cool is that? I had mentors that helped me do it from my dad to people that I paid. And I'm appreciative to every single one of them because I've learned so much from every single one of them. So I only want to work with people who want to have a great relationship with me. And if you don't, that's fine. Go find either someone else or whatever. You're just dead to me. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. But it's like I, my job is I want to find and surround myself with people who want to create win-wins and who want to have a great relationship. And there's just so many people on those plans that don't feel that way. They don't care if you're a commodity to them. And that's, that's I, they, and you know what? Maybe you want to be a commodity and that's fine. Again, that's like choosing one of these three options you have that, you know, choosing two of the three options that we have in front of us to focus on what you want from your, your business. But that's what I kind of, I, I wanted to focus on this idea of service and create an amazing experience. And everyone, see, that's the other thing is that everyone thinks they have this amazing experience in their practice. You know why you think it's amazing? Because that's, that's what you've got. Like, you, are you going to really raise your hand and tell me you've got some crappy patient experience? I mean, <laughs> and, and I don't know, maybe, maybe you actually do feel that way and you're being truthful and that's why you're listening today. Kudos to you. That's awesome. Congratulations. Way to know that there is a problem and you're doing something about it. Because I'll guarantee you there's a lot of people out there that don't realize they've got a shitty patient experience and are going to do nothing about it. It's, again, it's just going right back to those same people. I don't care about those people. I care about you. So to me, that is the big key. And that's kind of the biggest trend I feel like coming out of COVID is the number of practices that are dropping these PPOs. I think that's, but I, and, and I'm totally down for it, but you need to increase the revenue through adding specialty procedures first, and I think you need to have a high level of service. So those two things would go hand in hand if you're gonna be dropping PPOs. It's gotta be done. You cannot keep the same level of service you currently have, because I guarantee you it is not enough. And I know it's not enough or else you would have already done this. You would have already started dropping PPOs and been okay. So to me, going fee for service it's not a small increase in service. It's a dramatic increase in service. But again, you don't have to want to focus on service. You can have okay service. Obviously, I'm not telling you to have a shitty experience for your patient. I'm just saying you can have an okay experience for your patient. You can make it transactional. That's okay. That's fine. If that's what you want to do, that's fine. I don't think that's what you want to do, though. But it's, it's fine if you do, okay? I would much rather, you know, get praises and wows for... You know, you know, I, you know, we routinely get told how exceptional our staff is. They're great. They do a great job. They love praising people. And you know what? I don't keep people who don't like, I, that's why, I, you know, to a degree, I don't know how much of a, of a people person I truly am, but I surround myself with people who are my team leads are all detail oriented people. Cause I'm not really a detail oriented guy. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of about the idea and I say, you guys go make this happen and implement it and make it happen. So it doesn't need to be an exceptional customer experience though. So you can kind of come down on service if that's what you want to do. And the last one is quality. That's the third one you have to be choosing from. So I'm not necessarily saying you need to go out and pick the crappiest lab in the world if you're going to be focusing on having maybe slightly less quality, which is okay because you know what? They... So many of these crowns now, and a lot of you don't even realize it, is when you send it to a lab for them to make something, you, you, you're, it's just getting milled off of a machine. You're all ordering zirconia crowns right now, and it's just a block being milled off a machine. Well, you could do that in your office if you want. So there's not, like to me, the quality thing now is, is 
a lot of you are sending it like you're getting like a hundred and fifty dollar crown done. Well, I'm I'm getting a like a, a sixty five dollar crown done right now, which is slightly higher than it was a short time ago. But I'm gonna start printing my crowns. I bought I put my order in for my three D printer. I don't think I said that yet on one of my podcasts, but I'll and I'll be I'll walk you guys through that journey because it's gonna be awesome. Because to to print a crown, it's like two dollars. And it prints in 10 minutes. That to me is a game changer. And 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 so we we took it for a test run, and I don't I don't see the difference. I don't see the difference. And if something ever goes wrong with that crown, do you know how much it's gonna cost to fix it? Two dollars. All right, there's other things involved with it. But like, if your crown breaks five years from now, I mean, is there a warranty at all at five years? And if you're on PPO plans, they're going to tell you got to fix that. You know what I'd much rather fix is reprint a crown for $2 than to have to pay a lab $65 to do a whole new one all over again. Or damn, 150 or whatever it is that you're paying. So I mean, you can make these decisions. But I mean, there's labs out there when I do a full mouth case, though, that's different. If I do a full mouth case, though, you know, the lab bill is, you know, like four to five hundred dollars a unit, depending on, you know, where we are in the mouth and things like that. I mean, it's a totally different, it's a totally different concept and ball game and things like that. But I mean, the, the fees the patient pays are commiserate with that. But you can print a great crown. You can get a nice crown milled for $65. And I used to be into the Sarah game, but I just, I looked at the whole, like, first off, my associates really didn't want to play with it. Awesome. Great. Thank, thank you for having this. I literally has a bag over the top of it now, uh, a garbage bag over the top of it now. But like, like the, the, the associates are kind of the ones that ended up driving that, that whole deal. Um, mainly because I didn't have the oven to do zirconia. I only had Emacs, but I, I used to do, we used to uh, prep and mill and fire and seat a crown in about an hour and 15 minutes was our, our, our time that we wanted to do. And it was, it was pretty labor intensive to get that done. But still, it, I mean, even if you mill a block right now, depending on which one you've got, like if you've got the Glidewell one, I believe they're like 50 bucks for a block. And then if you use Sarek, they're like 40 bucks for a block, but you still got to stain it and fire it. So it ends up coming in, I don't know, your, your total pocket number is still like $45. So either, either way, we'll call it $50. And I'm like, do I really care about 15 bucks that much? Eh, possibly. You do enough crowns that it becomes a real number. But that's why it gets me excited to talk about a $2 crown. Whew. Come on. You're doing a ton of crowns. That'll add up. That gets exciting. And then be able to print aligners, retainers, and all that stuff. That gets me excited. But then there are different levels of labs. So that, that's kind of where the quality comes from. And obviously, you're never going to compromise on their quality of care. That's not an option. But what, what does that mean? It's just, you know, there's, you just, you, you know, do no harm. Like, you don't harm them. But like, I, I prep crowns in like five minutes. I think they're nice preps. I've never been told by anybody that they're bad preps. Being in that room for an hour prepping a crown does not make it a great crown prep. And I've had plenty of doctors I've seen that do spend an hour prepping in a crown. I'm like, what in the hell are you doing for an hour? What are you doing? And then when it's done, do I feel like it's any better than mine? No, but I've got 55 minutes of my life back that you don't have. But at the end of the day, I mean, you need to be doing a good job. And I feel like I do a good job. I do it really fast and we go on with our lives. Great. Super. But I think the quality kind of comes much more down to maybe the materials that you have, maybe even thinking about, you know, your facility. What kind of facility are you going to have? You can have a cheap facility that doesn't look like crap. There's so many great materials out there now, uh, like that you can use to make your office look nice. Um, So it doesn't just need to be labs, but also the stuff, the equipment that you're working with. Think about that. I mean, there's, think about the, I mean, most likely I, you know, I've had, you know, some ADAC chairs now for 15 years and they're working great. They look good, all that stuff. But I mean, you may want to go get something from China for 3000 bucks and it's going to work for a little bit and it's probably going to break and you get a fix and it goes back up to working again. Awesome. Great. Super. So there's different things you can be looking about that fall into that category of quality, but you only get to choose two. 
Because if you try to do th all three, you're going to go out of business or go mad trying. One of the two. That's not worth it. Really hammer home on two of those and do a pretty good job on the other one, and you'll have a very successful business. And I'm not here to tell you which one is to choose. I do think that the service one is the most fun. That's where you can have the most fun, in my opinion. And I'm all about fun now. I've done enough in my life now that I just want to have fun. That's all I want to do. I have fun talking on this podcast. I hope you guys enjoy it too. But I want to go in. When I go into that office, I want to have fun. I want to goof around. I want to have a good time. So to me, that's where that service part comes from. Okay? Uh, so if you want to learn more about that, go to titaniumpractice.com. Make sure you've downloaded the book, Forging Your Freedom. Uh, as always, I am dedicated to Forging Your Freedom. So if there's anything I can be doing to help you out, shoot me an email at info at titaniumpractice.com. Head on over to Titanium Practice if you want to, uh, to get a little more information, like I said. But that is all I've got for you today. Go have an amazing day. Thank you so much for listening. Bye.